Hey everybody, welcome to Mosaic House Online Worship and Blessed Merry Christmas to you all. I am Angel Gabriel. Isn't that obvious to you? Pastor V is on holidays. He found the weather in Edmonton way too cold and he is enjoying the warmth and sun in Hawaii. What a wuss, don't you think? I am here to declare, announce, share with you the good news. Because today, in the town of David, the King David, a child is born, a son has been born. He is the Messiah, the Lord, the Christ. You are familiar with the story, are you not? But why don't I retell it to you from my own perspective? May I do that? Because I am Angel Gabriel, and I get to do whatever I want. I appeared before Mary, this teenage girl, and I brought the good news, although she didn't find it as such. I spoke on behalf of the Lord, the Most High, blessed be His name, the Holy One. I said, Mary, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the Holy Spirit will overshadow you, and you will give birth to a son, and he'll be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Mary said, how can this be, since I'm a virgin? How can I give birth to a child, since I'm not married? And I assured her, the Lord Most High will overshadow you. And the child, child that you will give birth to, he'll be called Jesus. For God, blessed be his name, the Lord Most High will forgive the sins of his people. I also appeared before Joseph, Mary's fiance. They were pledged to be married. In those days, there were when, once you're pledged, that was binding. It was binding legally. It was binding relationally. It was binding traditionally. In every way, they were a married couple, except for one thing. They were not engaging in sexual activities. That was after the wedding. And Joseph, when he found out that Mary was pregnant, not by him. And he was so disappointed, so upset. He felt betrayed. And he thought about the disgrace that would come upon her and upon him. And he decided to divorce her quietly to avoid the public disgrace. You know, Mary could have been stoned to death in those days. But I appeared before Joseph. Joseph, do not afraid to take Mary home as your pledged wife, fiancé, for she's conceived not by a human being, but by the Holy Spirit. So he did. So he did. Months have passed, nine months to be exact. Joseph, he traveled along with Mary to the town of Bethlehem, the town of King David, to register. And when the time came, she gave birth to a child, to a son. The Lord himself, the Messiah, was born. And in the nearby fields, there were shepherds watching their sheep, the flocks, at night. And I appeared before them, and they were terrified, because the glory of the Lord, the Most High, blessed be his name, shone around them. And I said, shepherds, do not be afraid. I bring you good news, for I am Angel Gabriel, and I stand in the presence of the Lord Most High. Blessed be his name. And I said, today in the town of David, a son is born. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find the baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Go and look for him. Go and worship this Messiah. I am Angel Gabriel. Did you know I speak many languages? I am truly multicultural. 
because I'm multilingual. But one language that I do prefer above all the rest is Greek, because the Greek language is so, how should I say, so rich in its nuance, so rich in its depth and breadth of the meaning. The word angel simply means, in Greek, angelo. Can, can you say that after me? Angelo. You can hear the similarities, right? Angelo, angel. It simply means a messenger. I prefer the translation herald. I come with a message. This is not my message. It's the message from the Lord Most High. Blessed be His name, the Holy One. And I'm here to bring you the good news. The good news in Greek is two words put together. Uwan, angelo. You hear the sound of angel, angelo? Uwan means good. Angelo means message. So the good news is a good message. Some of your Bibles translate it into the English word gospel. Gospel is the good news. What is the good news? You might ask. What is this good tidings that I'm here to represent and announce and proclaim before you? The good news is this. Are you ready for this? This is so profound. This is so amazing. The Son of God became a man so that men may become sons of God. The Son of the Most High, Son of God, became a man so that men may become sons of God. Jesus Christ, the divine himself, he became a man so that you may become daughters, sons, and children of the Most High God. That is the good news. Amazing news. Unbelievable gospel. In your Bible, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 12, you know what it says? It says, this good news, this gospel, that Son of God became a man so that men may become sons of God. We angels, we long for that. We are jealous of you. We covet, we desire this amazing gift that you have received. But that gift is not for us. Because none of us, angels, none of us has received the gift of becoming a child of God. We are servants of the Lord Most High God. Blessed be His name, the Holy One. And yet, none of us, I did not receive that good news. On the note, when you are in heaven, who is a higher being, the angels or humans? The answer is the latter, because you are children of God, sons and daughters of the Most High. We will be serving you. We will be waiting upon you, for you are declared sons and daughters of the Most High. That is the good news. And again, it's a good news, isn't it? It's an amazing news. It's not a good advice. It's not good works, as in, you can't work for this. You can't obtain this. Even if you tried, you will never be good enough. You'll be never be, you will never be declared right or holy in the sight of the Most High God or Holy One, blessed be His name. This is beyond your reach. And that's why it is a good news, because it's a gift, gift given to you by the Son of God, who became a man so that men may become sons of God. This is indeed a good news. Because when you become a child of God, when the Lord Most High, the Holy One, deems you as His son and a daughter, you know what you get? You get hope. Christmas is all about hope, isn't it? And what is hope? Hope is having this certain confidence and expectation that the promises of God the Most High will come to pass. It's not a wish. It's a certain hope. It will happen. The zeal of the Lord will accomplish it. So you have this hope, having irremovable confidence and trust 
in God's promises that you are a child of God. Therefore, he has a hope for you. He has a plan for you, a plan to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a future and hope. And that hope is found you becoming a child of God. What are you hoping for nowadays? What are your fears and uncertainties? Jesus becomes your hope. And you are confident that he is sovereign. Therefore, whatever he wills for you shall come to pass. What's Christmas all about? Isn't it about joy? Joy is not happiness. Happiness is dependent upon your circumstances. It's happenstance. But joy is permanent. It's not temporary because joy is something that you receive from God the Father and God the Son, something that they shared from eternity. The Father says to God, the Father says to God the Son, I delight in you, I find joy in you. And God the Son saying to God the Father, God the Father, I find joy in you, I delight myself in you. That joy has been given to you because now you are a child of God. When you have that joy, even though you may experience unfortunate circumstances, even unhappiness, even anxiety and fear, even in the midst of all that, you can still find that inner joy within you because it's from God. What's Christmas all about? Isn't it about love? Love of God? But how do you know that God loves you? He has proven it to you. Your Bible says, while you are still sinners, Christ, the Son of God, died for your sins so that you may become sons of God. He died on the cross for you. When you were kicking and screaming, running away from God, hating God, you were hostile to God, even then, Christ loves you. He proved it to you by dying for you on the cross and rising from the dead. So he gives you this Adoption into the family of God. And that's how you know God loves you unconditionally. He loves you just the way you are. But he loves you too much to leave you just the way you are. Once the love of Jesus Christ invades you, you will be transformed and changed into the likeness of God the Son. What's Christmas all about? It's about peace. Peace is not the absence of war. Peace is the reconciliation between God and you. Your Bible says you are in enmity against God. You made yourself enemies of God by your rebellion, by running away, by dictating what is right and wrong and dictating your own own values and finding your own meanings of life. That's something only God can do for you. Indeed, you committed a treason. You revolted against the Most High God. You were at war. God didn't bring this war. You did. And yet, Jesus Christ, he brought peace. He brought the wall of hostility. He brought the barrier between you and God. And now you have peace with God. And now that you have peace with God, you have peace with one another amongst yourselves. You want the peace? Jesus is the peace. What's Christmas all about? In a word, Christmas is about Jesus. The Son of God became a man so that men, become, men may become sons of God. All I want, all you want, all what everybody wants is a person. Jesus Christ, the Lord, the Messiah, King of all kings. I am Angel Gabriel, and I bring you good news. Today in the town of David, a son is born. The Messiah, the Christ, the Lord, your hope, your joy, your love, and your peace. When I 